people, people that are interested in cats, the paranormal and things. Yes, there is no introduction to this video at the moment because for some reason I keep getting a copyright strike and I don't know what's doing it because at the end of the day, the only thing that isn't mine that I use from Kind Master is the introduction to my video. So all I can assume is, is something to do with that. If it isn't, then I'd like to know what the heck it is and uh, why the, you know, why the hell are they saying there's copyright strike about myself? There's only me. And we're back. Yes, my gimbal decided to daft spanner out. As I was saying, there's enough of me. There's only one of me and that is it. I'm the only one that does my own showcase if I'm doing animals or out and about simple as that or even if it's you know going to the paranormal i'm not borrowing somebody else's footage if i did i'd have to ask and then obviously compliment them actually on the camera and obviously down below in the description so i'm not borrowing other people's i can't sit in the middle because i've got a cat there as soon as i get up from somewhere he moves and he sits in the warm spot we currently have shadow <laughs> i'll show you after Anyway, uh, our Christmas was kind of, well, you're moving, are you now? <laughs> our Christmas was kind of interesting. Uh, basically, I didn't go to my mother's. I didn't. I did, sorry. We didn't have Christmas dinner at home because there's only two of us. And we do, there is another person, but he got, he went to his brother's for um, Christmas Day. I think it was his brother's. I can't flipping remember. He went somewhere <laughs> for Christmas Day. And um, he went to my mum's. But my mum is not as active as she used to be because, one, she's getting older. And two, she has COPD, which basically it's affecting her lungs and her breathing. And yes, I know there's worse people out there because I talk to a lot of people. And that's why sometimes when I'm talking to people, I either understand where they're coming from, from my experiences, or I know experiences of what I've heard of other people. And no, I do not. Now, even my glasses are being a silly spanner. No, I don't go around talking about other people's experiences because it's their private stuff. If they wish to tell you and it's out there, then fair enough. I can only say, if you want the full information, then watch this video. Simple as that. But sometimes a lot of us can go through a lot of things and it can affect your... Um, your future people can deal with it in different ways people will take drugs people will take uh will drink or do silly things that not which could affect their lives but also they don't realize could be affecting the people around them it isn't nice and that's how life is and that's why people sometimes people deal with it I used to get angry at one point. I mean, yeah, I'd go and yell and shout and everything, but not to the extent that I used to be. I used to be really, really, really bad. But when I I wanted to deal with it years later and I decided to go and do kickboxing, which I did up to four times a week, and that was my let out. I got I was happy doing it, really, really happy doing it when I'd come home, I'd just feel so relaxed. It was unbelievable. I was very, very active, very, very fit. And I would get up and do loads of things. I mean, I would get back and obviously I'd have the kids uh, babysat. Or sometimes some of the some of the ones I'd take the kids with me. Uh, what else? So, yeah, we'd take... I'd take the kids with me and yeah, I absolutely enjoyed it. But unfortunately, that's when things changed. <sighs> I shouldn't do this, but I'm doing it just to be comfortable. Things changed because basically I started 
being tired all the time and being really, really lethargic and I would get unexplained um, dizziness that I didn't understand about. Um, fudge. <laughs> yeah, the dizziness, the lethargic, just being really, really tired, no energy. I would get unexplained pains. I mean, the pains had been coming and going for years, but this was getting worse now. Uh, I sometimes wouldn't sleep at night, but during the day I would and drop like a stone. Even worse than I do now, because I do still do it sometimes, but not to the extent as I was really, really bad with it. I mean, I still, like I said, I still fall asleep easily. Um, there was other things. Oh, yeah, unexplained uh, swellings. It was like I'd sprained maybe an ankle or something like that, and it would just swell like a balloon. And I'd, I get cuts, I still get cuts, where they don't heal properly and I'd end up, well, I've got, you probably can't even see half of them, but I'm full of little bits of um, scars from where the cuts have just not healed properly. So I'm full of uh, scars all over. I mean, obviously when the cats were kittens, they'd scratch you and that was it. I'd be left with a flipping scar. I can't use plasters because I'm allergic to the latex in it and I break out in a rash and my glasses are still going hazy. I am so glad next month I'm getting some new ones. This is why I think I struggle and I have to look forward so closely is because I need new glasses and I'm actually going next month to go for eye test and get new glasses because these ones are had it. Definitely had it. I'm sick to death of having to look forward Sometimes I'll take my glasses off and that's why I do it. And the thing is, I had to wait until my prescription was up to go and get it sorted. Otherwise, here, you've got to pay more. And I'm like, no. So anyway, where was I up to? Oh, yeah, being really, really tired, lethargic and everything. Couldn't understand. I have that much stuff going on. It was horrible. Really, really horrible. But when you explain it to your family and you're trying to explain about these pains and everything, they look at it like, do you want attention? Is there something wrong with you? You're a hypochondriac. You do not need all these tablets. Why are you going to the doctors all the time? There's nothing wrong with you. You look fine. But what people don't realise is when you look fine outside, doesn't mean you're fine inside. So, I mean, I had problems from my past which I've learned to deal years later. I found my ways to deal, not taking, like I said, stuff. But uh, like I said, I'd go and do my kit boxing and stuff like that. And obviously then eventually started getting ill. <laughs> so I was not amused. And then I broke this wrist uh, one year. I was fine and I thought, oh yeah, I'll be going back to kit boxing after that. <laughs> yeah it didn't happen because i broke this wrist this one wasn't my fault now if i could take all these bands you can see the dry skin at the moment because of the bands <clears throat> this wrist isn't straight oh fudge this lighting is rubbish let's move this over uh, this wrist isn't straight it never will be straight. It's in the bulge of my arm. <laughs> right, let's turn that around that way. So anyway, yeah, the wrist will never be straight because what it was, I was in a pub because I used to go drinking out at the weekends. And yes, I had somebody looking after the kids. So I just thought that was you I'm talking. <laughs> and there's, oh, fudge it. Anyway, uh, Somebody was mucking around in a pub and basically they fell over and fell on top of me. And as I put my hand down, I put my wrist out, obviously, to automatically support myself from falling and knock the bone out of place. So, uh, that night I'd gone home and I woke up and I didn't know a thing. Now, I know for a fact I hadn't been drunk because when I even looked at my wallet the bit of change I don't I'd not touched the notes that I'd fetched with me I uh 
used the coins, but there wasn't that much used. And I actually only remember only having two drinks. So I can only assume is I bumped my head. But obviously I was with two other people that were younger than me that took me home and obviously didn't know any better. So otherwise I should have been really taken to the hospital right there and then, but there you go. Anyway, I woke up and it was a case of, oh, why is my hand hurting so much? And oh, what the fudge is my bone doing over there? You know, I'm like, uh, yeah. So I remember saying to my friends, you're right, I've got to go to hospital. It was like, I don't know. It was early hours in the morning. So I went to the hospital and uh, got there, told them about it and what had happened. And they're like, oh, how did you get here? I think we got a taxi. I can't remember. Quite, quite a while back now. So anyway, I let them know and they asked me to sit down and everything. And I was telling them, tell, you know, people were asking what was going on. And somebody was win somebody was crying like a little girl. It was a guy. I think he was saying something about his flipping ankle or something daft like that. <laughs> it's hurting. And I'm just like, ow, ow. That's it. That's all I was doing. Ow. This hurts. Ow. <laughs> and then my name gets called and you know my hands swelling you know swelling up and uh the nurse said well you know we've got to give you an x-ray and we can't give you an x-ray we're gonna to have to cut your rings off and i'm like no you're not cutting my rings off so i'm wetting my hands i'm like right i'll hold my hand pull the rings off and she's looking at me like to say what i'm like just do it so she actually got my rings off the ones on this hand and she just looked at me and thought probably thought well she's not done anything to her hand if she's that you know not bothered but uh obviously you know she, that's what they do when they do the assessment you sit down and then you have to wait to get your name called and i was told right well when you get your name called uh you to go through to x-ray and obviously they'll do what they need to do and then you're just got to sit and wait for the results so I went for the x-ray and obviously they were trying to manipulate my wrist and obviously it was hurting like hell I'm like ow no I can't do it no oh ow ow you know like you do so I remember uh getting you know sat outside well actually going back into the main room waiting for a little while and then it gets cold again and then they sit down and they show you the x-ray. Oh, you've done this, that and the other. And basically you get told, oh, yeah, you've done, you've, you've fractured, you know, you've fractured your wrist and everything. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, oh. So I thought, oh, I really have done something to it then. And they just, it's like the nurse was surprised because I'd asked her to pull the rings off. And I'd actually fractured it. And she must have thought, nothing wrong with it. But then to see it, see the evidence of this, uh, the x-ray she uh realized that uh, i'd actually done something to it so she's like well you'll have to go into the next room and we'll you know do a support on it so it's basically where they do like a pot or a what do you call it a pl proper plaster but they only do it half and then the other bit they do like um just bandages because basically when you've broken a limb, it's your body swells up. It's just a reaction. And you've got to support it and wait for the, um, the swelling to go down. Because if you don't and you put a pot, a, a full plaster on, what will happen is the swelling will go down and the limb will be moving in and out and it won't be getting fully supported. So you've got to wait until the swelling goes down before they actually put a full support on. So they only put half a uh, plaster on and the rest of it was loads of bandages and I had to put it in a sling to help the swelling go down so I'm like oh well that's fun <laughs> so I gets it done and the guy that was complaining that turned out I think he sprained his bleeding ankle or something dumb like that I turned and I said yep told you I think I fractured it and the, you know couple were surprised like <laughs> it's because I think I, don't, I wasn't rolling about crying I don't know 
So anyway, went home and basically I had to go back to the hospital. So I told her I actually had to come in because I'd done that much of a mess to it. Coming to the actual hospital to be have my wrist manipulated where they tried to pull the wrist into place. And they had to decide whether they were going to pin it or put plates in it or just let it do its own thing. So I had to wait a few days. I had to wait because I think it happened at the weekend. And they said, right, we'll come next week and you can come into the hospital. And uh, we'll do something with it, you know, try and you know see what we can assess. And I had to come in at something like seven or eight in the morning and wait in a waiting room to get called so I could go up to the ward. I was not allowed any breakfast, you evil people. No breakfast, only to drink water. Oh, that's not nice. So I was really, really miffed. Sat, sat in a flipping hospital bed, waiting to have an operation. And uh, having no food and watching the other people having food. And then it came to about five or six o'clock in the evening. Oh, uh, well, an emergency is coming, so you may have to get it done tomorrow. So basically, you can either stay here overnight or go home and come back. And this will be your exact bed. Took one look and it's like, stay in a noisy hospital and get your food given to you when you can actually go to the fridge and get it yourself. I'm going home. So I had to come back the next day and I thought, you know what, I don't care. I will be back next day. No breakfast, whatever. I'm going home and I'm in food now. I don't care. I'm getting out of here. So I went home and sat to my own bed and had my own food. And I was happy for it. But the next day I had to come back and I had to wait and be starved again. And then... They came along and gave me, you know, the injection to make me sleep and all the rest of the malarkey. And they were still trying to decide whether I needed panels. So not panels. Pins, plates, or just manipulate it and just bandage it up. Yeah, so they, um, I woke up, my arms in the plaster, and they said, no, we've not pinned or put any place which just it's been manipulated into place but my hand was like this yeah, my hand still shakes i'm like what the fudge am i going to do with my hand like this because i had it like at like at an angle like that and i'm like what the hell am i gonna do with my hand like that i can't even usually use my fingers to do anything because my hand is stuck in a stupid place Really? I used to get called emu. Emu. It used to be a children's thing that used to be on in the 80s, early 90s with a guy with a puppet. And it was a puppet of an emu. And because my hand was like that, I used to say, oh, look, here comes emu. Really? <laughs> so anyway, I uh, woke up and had been plastered. And, uh, yeah, I think I'd chosen the colour. And they're like, oh, do you want pink? I'm like, are you having a laugh? No. <laughs> no, it got, it got put purple. So, anyway, um, I'd woken up and it'd been plastered and all the rest of the malarkey. And, you know, they gave you just really bad, rubbish uh, painkillers. And then it was like, yes, I can go home. Yes. Just keep it up like this. I didn't even need to stay in overnight. I was like, yes, I'm going home. I can't wait. So I got picked up by my friend and got took home. And it was so hard undoing clothes and all the rest of the malarkey. And I had to keep it manipulated. I had to try and convince the kids to do the washing up for me. Believe me, having teenagers and getting them to wash up for you is hard work. So I had uh, my kids um, do the washing up and I get told six weeks later they did another, uh, what the fudge do they call it? X-ray, did another X-ray 
and they said right well it looks okay so you know you need to come in and you know go downstairs and go and get an appointment to go and get it taken off so i'm like okay so later on goes for an appointment down in a different department of the hospital to go and get it taken off so obviously in the waiting room gets cold and the doctor took the plaster off and obviously can't keep it because it's all full of dead skin and it smells really, really bad. Even though you want to keep it with all the graffiti all over it. But you're not allowed. They have to throw it away. They have to incinerate it or whatever the hell they do at hospitals. Probably incinerate it. So taking it off and because my hand was in this stupid position, the doctor tried straightening it. Well, it didn't go too well. Let me say, I let the entire waiting room know it was hurt. It was hurt. It hurt. Because he straightened it and I screamed. Because it friggin' hurt. And then he's like, oh, well, you might need to go to, what the hell do they call them now? Like a type of physiotherapy, but they called it hand class. Hand class really so it was like right we'll send you to ha hand class to so basically get some sort of strength ouch, movement in it you know because my hand was stuck in this stupid position this is why i suffer with it now <laughs> I'll tell you. so i went and had to do six weeks of doing stupid little trying to get your hands move you know full movement and picking up things and moving things and it was just like this is so boring please you're torturing me i did it i still had really rubbish uh movement in my hand and these two fingers which i still have problems with today completely froze on me completely just went numb that was it nothing and they'd gone numb all the way up here and all the way up there and they stayed numb. Usually when they go numb when from holding the hand up constantly, they would suddenly just go and just stay there until I put my hand down. And then they would, you know, even out again. Well, they didn't do it. And they sent me for, oh, sugar, I forgot the name. And I've seen the guy a few times where they give you like little electric shocks, you know, to see you know which limbs are acting and which isn't no, that's it nerve conducting test they call it they have to detect all the nerves <laughs> i'll give you flipping nerves in a minute <laughs> so anyway i went and i could feel it but these nothing nothing at all and they couldn't understand why they couldn't get the movement and they just said well you're just gonna have to wait until it comes back or come back again here it's like really so for several weeks it must have been six weeks could have been longer i don't know but gradually one day i got full i got movement back in them again and yeah i still get them but when i hold this hand up for too long they start going in fact my whole hand's hurting now because it's the weather and they uh they do they go numb these two fingers the little finger and the one beside it ring finger all the time so i can't hold anything for up for too long from picking and carrying they go and my hand will completely relax and i'll drop things out of it this hand i'll drop things anyway but not as bad as that hand my left hand my left hand is worse i've dropped so many things it is unbelievable i get the shakes in my hands and anyway, um, after what had happened with my hand, it took over a year to get the movement I've got in my hand now. And that's when I went to the doctor and he'd seen the amount of complaints I'd made with him to the point he says, I think you've got something called fibromyalgia. And I looked at him like, ooh, what? Fiber, what? I couldn't understand it. I had to actually get him to write it down. I'd never heard of it. But he said, well, I um, I can't do anything now, but you're going to have to go and see a specialist. I hate being frustrated. <laughs> so I went to see a specialist. 
where they do the usual things like um, whoops, blood tests and they do things like uh, x-rays and all the rest. Uh, you know, they're going over and they're checking all the pressure points with them with the hammer and all of that. And he's touching things. You know, limbs, arms, legs, you know, uh, you know, the swellings. And I'll tell them, tell them exactly how I was and everything. Where he came round, he says the exact same thing. It's my doctor, it's fibromyalgia. And this is when I was put on a lot of tablets because they put you on so much or so many different weak ones. They've got to work out which is good and which is bad. And uh, yeah, it took a lot of time to narrow down which tablets I did need and which tablets I didn't need. It wasn't very nice. And obviously I went to see somebody called like a pain specialist and obviously talked about problems. And I was put on antidepressants because apparently that's connected with fibromyalgia. And I'm just like, really? I didn't know that. But there you go. It was quite newish in this country, yet it was well known in America. Americans, they were well ahead with stuff like that. But here, no, we were still in the Stone Ages. So it was around about 2007, 2008. And uh, that's when, you know, it all came about. Uh, this is why years later and i've not even got on about my spine which i'll probably talk about another time i've got an itchy nose now i could have an argument <laughs> but yeah years later i do have a lot of problems with it i do have lots of swellings i have unexplained bruises which i don't know why people think oh you've been beat up it's like no it feels like i've been beat up but believe me i have not been beat up nobody's hit me i do I have problems with my balance which is connected to fibromyalgia and um, I did actually go and see a specialist about it who turned around and said that I had vertigo which is connected to fibromyalgia it is not fun and my balance is the biggest pile of rubbish ever no I am not scared of heights heights do not bother me I could sit there I could probably climb a ladder and when we went to Blackpool Tower we went up and obviously I had to be helped to go walk up. I'm just like, wow, this is one awesome view. But then there was one part that cut off and we couldn't go up. It was actually in a video, which is down in, I think it's out and about, so early this year. I mean, I would have went up higher, but we weren't allowed because there was high winds. So I suppose it was a bit dangerous, you know. And uh, yeah, it was quite it was like over 400 feet or something daft like that i don't know so that was a blackpool tower so no i don't have any problems with heights or anything like that they just do not bother me in the slightest but a lot of it's all connected to fibromyalgia like eating certain foods if i eat the wrong food then i feel like death warmed up <laughs> and end up with stomach ache again all connected to the same thing there's a nice big long list about it so that's one of the reasons why I don't do much. I mean, people will be like, but I know somebody who's got fibromyalgia and they're okay. Sometimes the early stages of fibromyalgia is fine. I mean, I've, I've had it for years before it started affecting me really, really bad because all the symptoms weren't coming together. They were all, all over the place. I mean, it affects me monthly hell, as I used to call it. I used to be really, really ill with that, so that didn't help. And it was, it was a lot of things that were all over the place. Eventually, started coming together, and you would get a list of like, right, this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens, this. And sometimes there is other illnesses that are connected to the same thing, but um, they have to sit there and work it out. And now obviously you're giving medication, then you're taking off medication or this medication is not working. Maybe a stronger dose will work and all the rest of the malarkey. Yes, I've still got fibromyalgia because it's not curable. You have to learn to manage it. And I've gone from being very, very active where I would get up in the morning, make my children's breakfasts. So I've got five children. Yes, five children. And yes, we did have a telly. I'd get up in the morning, I would get them their breakfasts and the younger ones, they would get dressed 
I would take them all to school or the older ones would go to school if they're in seniors, go to school. And then obviously if the young one was in nursery, it'd go nursery and all that. Come back, completely blitz the house. I'd get Hoover up, do the washing up, you know, do the dishes. I would make the kids' beds, tidy up their rooms a little bit, or uh, completely just blitz the house. Hoover it from top to bottom. Floors needed mopping. They all got done. Everything. And if I was really bored, I'd take the kids' big toys that they used to play with outside, like bikes and stuff like that, and I'd give them all a good clean as well. So they'd come back. And then I'd sit down for a few minutes and think, right, well, I know what we're having for tea. So I'd maybe just partly prepare it and it'd be ready and waiting to be done. Or I'd be sat and I'd ha had a, a computer then as well and we sat there in front of it. And then I would pick up the younger ones from school and obviously they'd come home and probably mess up a little bit, but not much. And then the older ones would come home and my oldest son used to be like, so what have you been doing all day? And he was like, being married this <laughs> so anyway i'd gone from being really active to doing this that and the other even going shopping carrying it all home myself yeah to i can barely do anything if i do a room i've got to do it gradually to tidy up i'll get up pick up a load of things go and put them where they need to be if i need to throw them in the bin or put them in the wash or anything like that I'd have to do it. I have to do it gradually, hoovering up or vacuum up, which other way anybody calls it. I can't stand up and do it for too long because of the pains and stuff I've got going on with my back and spine, which is another story. So I can't stand up for long. If I do, I can sit down, and if I'm going around the corners and stuff like that, I've got to be sat on the floor doing it or very low down, and then it does take me a while to get back up. Yes, I put on some weight, but not overly extremely weight because even though they say at the doctors, oh, you're obese, it's like, no, I'm not. I've got clothes, I can go and buy them in the high street, so I'm not obese at all. I know I'm not. These pyjamas, my daughter bought me. She was able to buy it, store-bought. They fit me. You know, she's got me the new uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Just stand up. Here you go. And then the, there's pants and, what does it say, on one of the legs. Lift up my leg, you can. So I'm holding onto the side of my bed. Oh, flipping heck. It does say something on it. So, yes, and I always wear a vest top underneath because when I go into the, yes, it's another Jack Skellington, but that's what I bought years ago. I wear vest tops for a reason because if I get too hot, then I'll take my main t-shirt off and then i'll be sat on a vest top and i'll cool down that way obviously women can't go around topless even if it is in your own home but you can't exactly go around topless on a screen because you'd scare the neighbors ah! <laughs> anyway i know it's a lot to talk about and yes it's not your main thing now we do have another taste testing sweets. I know I should be lifting my leg up and I've still done it. But I'm trying to get comfortable. <laughs> we have got another taste testing thing, but I want to know whether you really, really like watching them because if you're bored, tell me. I don't know. I'm not a psychic. I wish I were. <laughs> but we've got one more. There might be another one going after that, but then we're going to decide what to do next. Obviously, there is paranormal things, but we've, we're we doing them as organised trips at the moment. And sometimes I'll try and get to go to some places with other paranormal investigators. I can't exactly go on my own because of my medical conditions. Otherwise, I'd happily go on my own. So that's something that I've gone from doing things on my own to having to rely on other people to help me. It is a lot to take on. I wish I could do it, but I can't. Otherwise, I would have done it a long time ago. So, oh, yes, I managed to do it. Pull the lace through my shoe. Anyway, um, yeah, it is a lot. So we do do things like we've done castles. We are meant to be doing some arcade place at some point as well. Yes, the paid places. But it's easier for me to go to because I don't drive and neither does Simon. 
So that the only person I can get to drive, drive me to places at the moment is my son. And obviously we're giving money for the petrol. So that's why I ask for things like if uh, maybe a PayPal or something like that, because it'll go towards maybe the cost of the petrol, you know, get in there. And if we have to have food, because I've got to eat and take tablets. You know, I don't eat the tablets. I just got to have food first and take my tablets. So it, it, it all costs money. And it's not just that. Sometimes you've got to pay to get into the venue because these things are not cheap. And obviously this rubbish cost of living is not helping anybody. So whether you donate a pound, 10p, whatever, it all goes towards the kitty. And I'm not talking about the fluffy ones that I've got behind me. <laughs> Even though I do have a kitty fund where someone donated some money towards the cats, I've not touched it. But I do think I'd be buying the cats a, a new toy for them at some point and have fun putting that together. So we'll see how that goes. So first days, like I said, it's all paranormal or, you know, it could be talking or out and about or it could be telling ghost stories. But and then Mondays, I'm keeping them for still animals. Fair enough, I didn't do anything this Monday because a lot of things went on and it was Christmas Day and people would be out or people would be waking up and be like, oh, what am I done? I've eaten too much and it doesn't have to be turkey. It could be duck. It could be chicken. It could be anything you like. I don't condemn people who don't like turkey because I know a few people who don't like turkey. I even know my own daughter doesn't like turkey. We've had Christmas dinner at her house and we've had duck. So it's each and every individual person is different. So I'm not bothered. Uh, I know this video has gone on for ages and ages, but I'm going to try and do a new intro and just see if that makes it any better as well. I may try and use the old outro, the one that you've seen before. And if I get another copyright, then that will be getting taken off as well. It could be just the music. It could be just, it can't be the pictures because the pictures that I've used on there are my own. Nobody else has taken with my own camera, which I've edited and put up there myself. The only thing that I find is sometimes the music can become copyrighted. And it's like, really? And the thing is, I bought them all off um, an editing studio. And I do know you get some on YouTube, but then they could become copyrighted as well. So you can't win. Anyway, like I said, I've gone on flipping ages with this video. So let me know whether you like any videos like this because it is a very, very long story about how things have happened. And the only reason why I'm talking about this now is because a certain person was upset, not me, on Christmas Day. And it had built up for years and years and years and years. And obviously it ended in tears. And it all, I mean, I already knew about it, a lot of things. But it all came out in tears of their past problems. And the pro thing is, I find, is if you've kept in your past for years and years and years, it builds up and builds up and builds up and then you explode. And it all comes out. And sometimes I don't think that's a good thing. I always find if you talk about it, it does help. And people can understand why you're hurt or why you're upset or why the way, why you act the way you do. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to end this video before I bore you all to death. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you all had a good Christmas. And I all, I, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I hope you all have an awesome new year and the next Thursday video will be in January anyway hope you enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe and thank you for watching bye <laughs>